Gradually after his er Gradually after his early years through education, he married the wonderful Margaret he married the wonderful Margaret Emily Whale Ard Ard Okay, There's, this sentence is too long. The Three Railway Engines was published to readers in Great Britain and became a success selling 225... 22,500... Okay. Eventually, Middleton was fired, and as of the Ninth Impression in 1949, C. Reginald Dob... Is it Darby? I'm going to say both. In spite of this, the success of the three railway engines prompted Wilbert to write the sequel book, which features Thomas in his very own book, continuing his advent. Okay. We don't need to say book twice. Wooden railway, represent. Wooden railway, represent. The illustration of Thomas, on the other hand, is based on a London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway E2 class tank engine, as illustrated by Reginald Payne, now redone by C. Reginald Dalby. Yeah, it's Dar It's not Darby. That was me being silly before, I apologize. How are you? How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm reading these words. These words are my own, from my heart flow. I like you as a friend. Um... <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, another motorcycle. And moved to Stroud in Gloucestershire, where he spent for his final... Okay, no four. There isn't any four. Okay. The plans for the 27th book of the Railway series, as titled Really Useful Engines, had already been set for Wilbert... Okay. That was my phone, sorry. As for his elder child, Christopher, he was happily married with Diana, and they had a young child of their own named Richard. And, and they had a young child of their own named Richard. Sorry, a plane just went by. Sorry, it's really loud. I don't know, maybe you can't hear it, but it's like shaking the entire house. Just my luck, every time I open the microphone. <laughs> okay, we're getting, we're getting there. Just waiting for it to go by. How are you? <laughs> okay. Um. After that, Christopher started to become an ambitious writer and wrote the first paragraphs. Ted Ray read aloud five railway series book volumes to be adapted for television in Jack and Nori, which were aired from September 18th to October 2nd, 1970, by the BBC. Ted Ray read aloud five railway series book volumes to be adapted for television in January, which was aired by the BBC from September 18th to October 2nd, 1970. The solution? Enter David Mitten, who had worked for Jerry Anderson on Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, Joe 90, and UFO. Enter David Mitten, who worked for Jerry Anderson on Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet and the Mysterions. Mysterions? Mysterions? Okay, I think I'm gonna get this right. Mysterions. Captain Scarlet and the Mysterions. Captain Scarlet and the Mysterions. Captain Scarlet and the Mysterions. Ringo recall. Ringo. <laughs> After a long time production in Fra. Oh, sorry. In 1985, Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends had been nominated by BAFTA in the... Is it BAFTA or B-A-F-T-A? I'm going to say both to avoid looking silly. <laughs> okay. That doesn't stop Thomas from continuing his success with merchandise... Oh, through merchandising, I think. Okay. This includes the addition of changeable molded... Fa Molded, gotcha. Oh, I think I've been spelling molded wrong my whole life. It's like mold as in moldy. <laughs> Sorry, that's like, that's my stream of consciousness. Um, these were all made using both solid lead and plasticine for wide shots. Oh, lead. Oh, <laughs> solid lead. I'm a fool. It's like seven in the morning. Um, 
This was the first series to introduce the first set of diesel locomotives as well, like Devious Diesel, Daisy, and Boko. Everyone loves Boko. With the second series already aired, the life on television for Thomas is highly regarded at its peak in quality, as it still is today. Oh, I like season four. Okay, all right, well, that's, an, that's an opinion. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't, I don't mean to start a, a tussle. Um, Season five's the best. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I like season five. Season five is awesome. You know what? Let's, we shouldn't do this. We, we, we can't. We gotta be. Sub, we gotta. No, we should be. No, we shouldn't be objective or subjective. We should just not start. Yeah, we shouldn't start a quarrel. That's, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna move on. A year. <laughs> Back in England, the show had once again been nominated by BAFTA alongside Super Ted. Paddington Goes to School, Max Headroom's Giant Christmas Turkey, Danger Mouse, and The Wind in the Willows in the Short Animation category. And the winner was, drum roll please, Super Ted! Back in England, the show had once again been nominated by BAFTA alongside Superted, Paddington Goes to School, Max Headroom's Giant Christmas Turkey, Danger Mouse, and The Wind in the Willows in the animation category. And the winner was, drum roll please, Superded! Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm sure it was a great show. Um, I think it's BAFTA. I think it is BAFTA. A few decades prior to the book's publication, Let's go back to the year of 1949, in which Tank Engine Thomas again was published to learn more about the universe of Sodor. A few decades prior to the book's publication, let's go back to the year of 1949, in which Thomas the Tank Engine again was published to learn more about the universe of Sodor. A very detailed map of the island was developed very soon. Um. It costs more than 100 euros for a seller's copy. Or pounds. I, that's pounds. Yep, that's pounds. Sorry. <laughs> the Scarlowy Railway, both inspired based on... Okay. Tally Flynn. I'm pretty sure it's Tally Flynn. If I'm wrong, you can pants me at my wedding. Nope, no, you can't do that, but I am going to, I'm, I'm gonna do my best. We're gonna see the thing. All right, just turn in a page. Um. There was another narrow gauge line called the Mid-Sodor Railway, which closed in January 1947 after over 60 years of service due to its decline. Duke, no! Sorry, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm emotional. Other than Stanley, welcome, sorry. There were two stations in Arlesdale, and one of which was located at the northern end of town that was tragically closed after the service with the Mid-Sodor Railway had ended 20 years later. Oh, earlier, sorry. Or Dream Diagon in Sudrick of all stops on the railway. <laughs> that is Sudrick, if I've ever read it. Um. Home to the real world counterparts of Coldy. F okay, I think you should put thes in front of the different railways. After meeting with Rick Segalow, I'm going to say this name a few times. Sigelkow. I'm going to say Sigelkow, and if you need me to re-record this, I will. After meeting with Rick Sigelkow of Swinet, oh sorry, which was beautifully composed by Joe, Re Joe Raposo. Speaking of whom, in order to make the character smaller than the other people, this was when the crew had to painstakingly shrink him down to 18 inches tall through ultra matte. Speaking of whom, in order to make the character smaller than the other people. This was when the crew had to painstakingly shrink him down to 18 inches tall through Ultra Matty. I'm gonna say this a few times. I'm 
sorry, there's a few words I've never seen before, and thank you for teaching me these words, but I'm going to try to say them a few times, so um, I hopefully say them right. Speaking of whom, in order to make the character smaller than the other people, this was when the crew would have to painstakingly shrink him down to 18 inches tall through ultra matty. Through ultra matty. Through ultra matte. Through ultra matte. There's no accent. <laughs> um. As for the Thomas stories, when the series was eventually brought. Oh, bought from England, sorry. Thanks to child development psychiatrist Dr. Rong Slab. Okay, I apologize. Here are a few examples of dialogue differences in both versions. Trucks, guard, fat, Sir Topham. <laughs> in addition, oh, sorry, my voice cracked. In addition, the episode titles were also changed for the children in America to understand as well. I'm sorry. This is sad. I never liked this. I say trucks, or at least I try to. Ugh, you know. I, I, I said cars a few times in my series, but, you know, it just gets stuck in your head, you know? And <laughs> this is done so the American children can understand. <laughs> oh, oh, well. I, I understand why they did this, but I would like to say that I'm an exception. I think I got it. Um... I love the part in the Alicia Body season six episode where the dialogue change is Gordon calls Percy a peasant, but not in the U.S. version. I think that's the funniest part of the show. Um, go UK dub. Rock on. I'll listen to Angelus over Brandon any day. Oh, my gosh. I, if anyone disagrees, I'm going to smack him. Uh, just kidding. That's not, we, we should discuss. This is about discussion. We just can't. We have to be able to listen. Sorry, I'm, I'm rambling here. Sorry, I just lost my place while I went on that rant, but I here we are. <laughs> the late Ari Magder, played by Dan Jones, Stacy's nephew and younger cousin of Matt. Oh, played Dan Jones. I'll fix that. The only regular cast who stayed on throughout the entire series. On a side note, George Carlin was nominated two times for the same category in 1992 and 1994. But no 93. Oh, come on. Britt Allcroft, Rick Sigelkow, and Nancy Chappelle won the Gemini Awards for Best Children's or Youth Fiction Program for Series in 1993. Ayo, there it is. <laughs> Britt Allcroft, Rick Sigelkow, and Nancy Chappelle won the Gem Gemini. Sorry. <laughs> Brian would even meet and greet with the audience after the show. <laughs> the premise of Wilbert's creation became very popular in Japan and resulted in lots of merchandising launched, including VHS tap. Sorry. Okay, let me see how much time. <laughs> and some range of departing, now toys. While Britt was planning to launch Thomas to American audiences with Shining Time Station alongside Rec... David Mitten and Robert D. Cardona were looking into making new sh... Oh, okay. I see what we're doing here. The idea of du And the inspiration for the series' premise was drawn in from the history of Crowley Maritime Corporation which developed into a series of competition between the two tugboat companies in a big city from time to time. And the inspiration for the series' premise was drawn in from the history of Crawley Machine Company, which developed into a series of competition between the two tugboat companies in a big city from time to time. The production shooting began in 1987 and wrapped up the following year in December 1988. The production shooting began in 1987 and wrapped up the following year in December 1998. Oh, come on. The storyline for Tug's episodes, unlike that of Thomas, were considered to be a much more slight... much slightly darker. 
Now, the reason why we show the faces of the individual's cast, sorry. Speaking of which, they were discussing, sorry. However, plans for the single were nearly, oh, sorry. And Angus Wright was the, and Angus Wright was the executive producer. As for the television, sorry, television. All of this commotion had ultimately caused things to cool between the Audrey Flam- Flamley? That sounds like a dessert. <laughs> okay. Another fun fact, that for the- Whilst making his radio program, he first met Wilbert, Christopher, Richard, and the Audrey family a while later. Whoops. Speaking of which, the forced- the crew had a chance to film the cluttered study room that contained his dismantled model train set and a picture of his rowing team. Audrey was a rower? Oh my god. That is cool. Oh, I did that. <laughs> a little, okay, that's cool. I, I relate to the man. Throughout the entire documentary, selections of Sir John Gilgood's I'm going to say this a few different ways. Oh, gosh. Throughout the entire documentary, selections of Sir John Gielgud's, selections of Sir John's Gielgud's, selections of Sir John Gielgud's railway stories narrations were heard in several places, where all the names of the locomotives, including Reverend W. Audrey, were stripped off after GNR Oh, sorry. G-N-E-R. <laughs> this book was also dedicated to both Wilbert's... W oh. During the, f during the fourth series, Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell went on... Campbell. I know how to read it, but sometimes I say it oddly, so just make sure I don't do that. <laughs> during the fourth series, Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell went on to provide eight more songs, which were mainly sung by children. It all started when the Four Marks Beaver Scouts in Hampshire won a nationwide competition to write Thomas' Christmas song. Thomas's, why, that silly apostrophe got me. When the official Thomas the Tank Engine website was launched on ro oh. Serving as a mem- sorry serving as a memorial to his contribution to the Tally Flynn Railway since 1952, a rowan tree was planted opposite Bringlass Block Post. Bringlass Block Post. Bringlass Block Post. That is, that is fun to say, if I'm saying it right. Bringlass Block Post. That should just uh, this is a se very serious part of the scripts. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to lighten the mood here. <laughs> Nicholas Joan called the BB... Oh. And on the same day that Nicholas ran the BB... rang the BBC. A few months later, at Gloucester's Cathedral... Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Gloucester. Because it's not Shire. Okay. Oh, gosh. I'm so American. These words just kill me. Gloucester. You see, like, ah, gosh. Or I'm gonna... You're gonna get a live feed of me going on... Pr seeing how to pronounce this. Ah, oh, gosh. <laughs>
was made by Alfred Alfred Fisher, former Lord Lieutenant of Gloucestershire. <coughs> when Britt Allcroft successfully acquired all the rights to Thomas from the publishers for... Oh, I'm sorry. Iron Ari, Iron Ari and Bert was inspired by the Mount Parnasse de... Baja was inspired by a story involving... Was inspired by a story involving the best kept station competition. Baja was inspired by a story involving the best kept station competition. And the royal train incident with the queen's bath splashing about. Oh. As an added bonus, this was. I just hit the table. A year later in 1999, the show was once again nominated by BAFTA. B A F T A. I think we've had this problem before. <laughs> okay. I Maybe you can say BAFTA. I we we figured this out. I forgot. I'll just say it both ways. I'm sorry. <laughs> A year later in 1999, the show was once again nominated by BAFTA in the children's preschool category. The show was once again nominated by BAFTA in the children's preschool category and Techwin the Tractor, or Techwin Ye Tractor. Ah, oh God, the Welsh, the Welsh. <laughs> he explained the plot. Additional filming locations including, oh, the station at, oh. When Brit came to the revelation that John's voice was perfect for Thomas, Unfortunately, this casting decision would not last, and it was their loss. He sounded amazing. I only heard his voice in the trailer, but it was perfect. Okay, that's, that's a shame. He recalled his good fortune to be the voice. Oh. I'd cast you, Tom. Or John. <laughs> I'd cast you, John. <laughs> Acclaimed actors Bob Hoskins and e Ewan McGregor? What? <laughs> Hello there. General Kenobi. But was later replaced with Neil Crone for the final cut as well. His voice was cool too. In the Eric Idle tra trailer, you know, you got, you got John, you got, you know, you got Keith. You know, you got my boys. They were great. And it was changed to a stylized New Jersey accent. New Jersey accent? What's that like? <laughs> and it was changed to be a stylized New Jersey accent. New Jersey represent, am I right? All right. Boomer was jealous of Burnett's relationship with his late lo- what? However, Doug Lennox did make a brief appearance in the final cut of the film, albeit as a brief motorcycle rider. I never heard this word out loud, so I'm going to say it a few times. I'll bet as a motorcycle rider. I'll be it as a motorcycle rider. You know what? I'm going to look it up right now. <laughs> Be it. Oh, it's just the way. Okay. I'll be it. Okay. That's what I kind of thought. All right. You can see Boomer in a few scenes. The sp George and Cranky were also intended to have roles in the old. Cranky had a non speaking role in two scenes. First in the. The later. The 1999 U.S. teaser poster had John Barry credited as composer as he was originally signed on to the project. The 1996 U.S. teaser poster had John Barry credited as composer 
as he was originally signed on to the project. Due to scheduling conflicts, he left the project, and Hummy Man took his place as the film score composer and songwriter, much to Allcroft's satisfaction. You can say anything you want about Thomas and the Magic Railroad, but Hummy Man's score was spectacular. Such beautiful music. Oh my gosh. Sung by Neil Don- whoops, sorry. Sung by Neil- Neil Donnell. Donal. I'm gonna say both. One was a shortened version, sung by Neil Donnell. Neil Donnell. Sung by Neil Donnell, as heard in the movie. Britt Allcroft and editor John Wiseman. Wiseman? Wiseman? I'm gonna say both, Daniel. <laughs> Britt Allcroft and editor John Wiseman. No, it's not John, it's Ron. I, <laughs> I messed up the part I understood. Okay. Britt Allcroft and editor John Wiseman. Why am I saying John? Uh, I'm, I apologize, Daniel. Britt Allcroft and editor Ron Wiseman. And editor Ron Wiseman. The film made a charity premiere showing at London's Odeon Cinemas in Leicestershire Square. Oh boy, that's going to be a tough one. Leicester. Oh boy. All right. Leicester City. Leicester. Leicester Square. Leicester City. Leicester. Leicester City. Leicester. Leicester City. Leicester. Okay. Leicester Square. In Leicester Square. In Leicester Square. In Leicester Square. I am sorry, Daniel. I am so American. <laughs> I hope that worked. And if that is a problem, I will be happy to record it. I just YouTubed the pronunciation. <laughs> um, but I hope one of those sounds like it. I am from New Jersey. Um, okay. Albeit repainted to resemble the number one engine himself. Look, albeit, no trouble that time, Daniel. <laughs> it's just, albeit, you know, I don't know. I look at it and it's like, I read I'll bet, even though there's an I in there. You know, I, I've never had to read it out loud before, but in the previous recording, I struggled. But this time, I rose victorious. Um, uh, moving on. Some mainstream critics, like Roger Ebert, criticized the film for lacking its redeeming qualities. Some mainstream critics, like Roger Ebert, criticized the film for lacking its redeeming qualities. With the consensus, a oh, consensus, of which over $15 million was raised domestically, which, oh, Thomas and the Magic Railroad Court <laughs> with a consensus. That's a, I know the word consensus. I don't know why I did that again. With a tie-in merchandising. Oh, with tie-in merchandising. Wooden Railway products. Wooden Railway represent. As pre-production started on Cedar... His son, Jonathan... Including the two episodes alongside Phil Fairley. Okay. After the sixth series, Hit Entertainment secured the rights to. Oops, sorry. At the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. Birmingham. In Birmingham. In Birmingham. In Birmingham. Martin Clutterbuck created a Thomas website for dedicated fans of the Railway series called... Oh. This would... Oh, let me check. What page am I on? This would also be the last season to utilize the 35mm film... Arthur Clarence, what up? Allowed writers to take creative freedom... Free... Oh, God. In Emily's new coacher, oh. 
new friends for Thomas and sorry, I think someone just slammed the door in my home. And digital beta cam SP not beta cam, sorry. He previously directed two episodes for the six series, including Jack in the Pack. Sorry, my family is talking. I have to wait for them to stop. And Ed Welch also contrib. Oh. <sighs> After discussions with Hit, becoming a rup. Which may be clearly un I. <laughs> a prime of. I love this part. In which young children would learn and have fun through these educational interstitials. Stitials. Interstitials? In which young children would learn and have fun through these educational interstitials. Through these educational interstitials. The eighth series of Thomas saw many massive shifts and transitions in the, the publishing rights for the sheer. This updated. Oh. Christopher and Diana conva, oh. converted to 480. A special event was held at Hatfield House in Hertfordshire. All right, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I am pulling up the pronunciation now. I could not pronounce Sheltingham, Cheltingham, you know, I couldn't do it. But I promise I will get this right for you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs>Two months later, on June 4th, a special event was held at Hatfield House in Hertfordshire. Two months later, on June 4th, a special event was held at Hatfield House in Hertfordshire. I'm just going to listen to it one more time just in case. I don't want to give you trouble. Um, <laughs> well, how are you? In Hertfordshire. In Hertfordshire. From July 16th to August... Okay. A special anniversary expressed was service. No. Romney. Hythe and Dimchurch. Hythe and Dimechurch. Hythe and Dimechurch. Hith and Dimchurch. Hythe and Dimechurch. Hith and Dimechurch Railway. Hythe and Dimchurch Railway. Hith and Dimchurch Railway. Hythe and Dimchurch Railway. And the Bluebell Railway. With a recreation of the Station Master's Office, or Wilbert's study. I've been there. Since the change of broadcast licensing. Oh, sorry. Thomas Engine Thomas again. Oh, sorry. Tank Engine Thomas again. Even after the special, oh, the Railway Series stories, oh, featuring over 9,000 pages and, oh, yeah, 9,000. It's over 9,000. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and much more. And by much more, I mean like diapers. Like this is pretty comprehensive. <laughs> I'll do it one more time just so you have more for this one. At 1.65 kilometers. Sorry, it was raining outside, and I looked at it and said I don't like it. <laughs> so that I wasn't talking about the script. A short-lived spin-off series centering around Jack and the... Oh, oops, sorry. This resulted in some last-minute script editing that also presented production challenges. For instance, putting Thomas and Percy's name in every single title of the... <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not bitter. I'm not. I, I promise. I like the pack. I do. I, I do like the pack. You know, Buster's a sweetheart. Patrick's kind of a jerk, but, you know, nothing is concrete. Modeler Cl What? 
Regardless, they decided to scrap the Tamiya. And, oh. Fellow Thomas modeler Chris Lloyd notes that all the pack vehicles had a small flat fan underneath each model for kicking up dust. That's so cool, I never knew that. That's such a good idea. <laughs> but due to technical difficulties, installing the, oh, sorry. But due to technical difficulties, installing the radio gear, that's what I'm trying to get. But due to technical difficulties installing the radio gear, the backhoe was removed from his model. But due to technical difficulties installing the radio gear, the backhoe was removed from his model. Nelson's cons- Similar to Thomas' pre-eighth season, the spin-off also used the original 35, oh, sorry. Two of which will be they were featured in interactive insti- Instituals. A large-scale model of James was made to fit in on a new wharf set to join Thomas for interaction with the- To begin reprinting volumes 27 through 40. The latter episode featured Whiff's debut appearance, one of the four further characters created for the series. To be honest, I think Whiff stinks as a character. <laughs> I'm terrible. Alongside Whiff and three new characters, several familiar faces. Oh, sorry. And were released on Engines and X. Sorry. The beginning of the DVD featured an alternative opening sequence where Thomas visits the little railway. So tasteful. On March 15th, Drayton Manor Theme Park in Staffordshire, in Staffordshire, in Staffordshire, in Staffordshire, officially opened their Europe Thomas Land, now renamed the Soot, following a buyout from C S4C, while Peter Bot Burn. Not everyone was particularly pleased with this huge makeover for the show itself. Big surprise wrote tributes and dedication to his me memory. But when a new tank engine called Stanley arrives to help Thomas with... It all started on... making her the first woman storyteller for the series, but she immediately left, and the gig went to Brosnan. Ouch. To film for the majority of the show... Stanley's popularity grew with the following of an Okay. Stanley's popularity grew with the with Stanley Hmm. Okay. Performed by Chris Madden or Maiden. I'll do both. <sighs> Performed by Chris Madden. Performed by Chris Maiden. And one more, why not? Performed by Chris Medin. Alright, that should cover it. And it had arguably... At view sim... Okay, great. At view cinemas in Leicester Square. And we're gonna have some fun. We're going to... Google that. <laughs> Lester. 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 Okay. The Great Discovery made a special blue carpet premiere at View Cinemas Lester. in Leicester Square. In Leicester Square. Lester. In Leicester Square. And accepting others without I, resort. Okay. The first to be cut to 20 minutes. Oops. Stephen eventually applied for a job as a letter sorter following his successful run with the series. Like at a post office? With this transition, here is an example of Brosnan's narration for Gordon Takes a Shortcut, featured on an animation director. Oh boy, Dino, 
All right, we're gonna get some samples of that name. Oh boy. Dino Athan Athanasu. Okay, this is a this is a doozy. Let's see. It might be. Oh my god. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up on YouTube and uh, see if they have a pronunciation tool. It's amazing how thorough they have it. No, I think I have to guess. Okay. Dino Athanasu's website. Dino Athanasu's website. Dino Athanasu's website. Featured on animation director Dino Athanasu's website. David E's assisted by make The 12th series wasn't shown in Hungary, Norway, Romania, Poland, and the Netherlands. Oh. Rumors include that the Japanese Oh. Whoops, sorry. At Thomas Land the 3, sorry. Visitors can watch Thomas, Edward, Rosie, and all their friends in action on the exhibition display as they visit Thomas Land. Except Toby, I think he was stolen. <laughs> With the fully animated adventure. Owning copies of both the island of Sodor, its people, history, and railways, and so. Okay. During the history of Tom. But recreating every familiar set and character in the CGI would take some time. I still haven't done it. Where's Where's Balamudi? Where's the ice cream factory? I mean, come on. I'm waiting for all these classic locales. Sorry, I'm being a bit of a bit of a sassy pants right now, aren't I? I will continue. And Leicester Square on Saturday, September 26th, 2009. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> this happens every time. Lester. Lester? Lester. All right. In Leicester Square, in Leicester Square. In Leicester Square. In Leicester Square. On Saturday, September 26, 2009. Using still images from Hero of the Whales. Go Go Thomas was performed by Sam Blewett. He blew it! I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was initially a one off special, so they can make a look. It was initially a one-off special. It was initially a one-off special, so they could make the music a little more contemporary. And video games for Nintendo Wii and DS in Europe and Oceania. Oceania might be, yeah. And Oce and Oceania, and Oceania, and Oceania. Brand manager of Hit Entertainment, Victoria Bushel. Is it Buschel? Bush? I'll, I'll say it a few different ways, like I tend to do. Brand manager of Hit Entertainment, Victoria. Brand manager of Hit Entertainment, Victoria Bushel. Victoria Buschel. Victoria Bushel said, which became Hit Entertainment's highing sell. The show continued after. This season marks the first appearance of Charlie the Purple Tank Engine. Oh, we know Charlie, don't we? Henry and the Express. Spresh. That's wonderful. Okay. This was also the first season in which Thomas's oh. And an all new rock and roll song performed by Sam Blewett titled Roll Along. Sam Blewett. <laughs> I think I've made a whole shtick about that before. Thomas and Friends received very strong audience figures 
and put forward some fascinating new scenarios that could never have been achieved before. Like giraffes and bubbles. Several British Heritage Railways, including the Battlefield Railway, and oh god, they gotta stop putting things in Leicester. Because then I have to YouTube it. Because, I'm sorry, I'm gonna mess it up. Leicester. You know, I think that's how I said it. You know. Ugh. Oh. This is just great. I'm sure you love this. It's, it, YouTube is telling me I've looked this up before. Lester. Lester. So I don't even remember it right. Well, let's, let's get it right today. All right. And was 394 meters longer than the previous... <sighs> Drayton Manor's Thomas Land held the ultimate 65th anniversary extravaganza on September... No, Saturday. What? I'll get it. <laughs> it's clear that Thomas and Friends has a magical quality that entertains the young and young at heart. Yeah, that's me. I'm not young anymore. I'm old. This would allow the team to genuinely do something extraordinary with Thomas by expanding the horizon. You know, sometimes the best travels are those we can only dream about. <laughs> with screw lick couplings. Oh. With screw lick cup. Sorry, I'm not saying link very well. Let me just reposition myself here. With screw link. I'm not saying link very well at all. Link. Link. Salty, Whiff, Stanley, and Butch all made their comeback in this special. That was cool when they came back. I was very excited. Did Harold return too? Was Harold back earlier? I might just, Daniel, I'm not saying you're wrong. You've researched this. I thought it was Harold. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna record Harold in there, just in case. Um, you know this better than I do. I just want to record this now in case you need it later. Misty Island Rescue, here we go. Here we go! Okay, that was weird. Um. This season marked the return of Iron Airy and Bert and Jem Cole. Gotta love Jem. He is a gem. Jem Cole is a gem. It's a good man. He fixed Trevor and Elizabeth. That means he's good in my book. Okay. In spite of this, the DVD sales of Misty Island Rescue had increased in both the UK and Australia, and be- <laughs> No, why was it the best-selling DVD? Okay. And sales for the associate most associated merchandise. I'll cut to that part. Our feature-length DVDs are clearly delighting Thomas fans and sales for the associated merchandise are also looking exceptionally good. Man, why couldn't this have happened during Lost Treasure? <laughs>
untapped potential in Thomas and Salvador that can really get the gears turning and make people happy. So no matter what, in some way, Salvador can be whatever you want it to be. And you should have solace in that. Dear Christopher, here's your friend, Thomas the Tank Engine, who wanted to come out of his station yard and see the world. These stories tell you how he did it. I hope you will like them, because you helped me make them. Your loving Danny.